Summary of a Passage to India by E. M. Forster India was a British colony in the early 1900s. In the town of Chandrapur, Aziz, a young Muslim doctor, talks with his friends about whether it is possible for an Englishman and an Indian to be friends. Aziz thinks it humorous, although the English may be arrogant and impolite at times. During this time, Adela quested and an old woman named Mrs. Moore arrive from England. Adela wants to get married to Ronnie Heslop, who is Mrs. Moore's son and works for the government in Chandrapur. The two women go to the club for people who only speak English and say they want to see the real India. That night, Mrs. Moore and Aziz meet in a nearby mosque and hit it off right away. The English collector, Mr. Turton, throws a party at the club and asks some Indians to come meet Mrs. Moore and Adela. The head of the government college, Cyril Fielding, likes how friendly Adela is to the Indians, so he asks her and Mrs. Moore to tea. Adela asks for Aziz to be invited too. These two people meet before the tea party and get along great. Professor Godbull, Adela, and Mrs. Moore, who is a Hindu, join them. Things are going well at the party until Ronnie shows up and treats the Indians badly. After giving it some more thought that night, Adela decides not to marry Ronnie. They break up without a fight. Later, their car hits an unknown animal, and Adela changes her mind during the crash. Fielding's tea party group goes on a day trip to the Marabar Caves thanks to Aziz. Fielding and Godbull miss the train, so Aziz goes with Adela and Mrs. Moore by himself. After having a lunch and riding an elephant, they go to some old caves that don't seem friendly. People are suffocating Mrs. Moore, and the echo in the caves makes all sounds sound like boom. She stays behind because she is sad while Aziz, Adela, and a guide go see more caves. Adela knows she doesn't love Ronnie as they walk. She talks to Aziz about marriage and asks him if he has more than one wife. He feels hurt and hides in a nearby cave to calm down. Adela is not there when he comes out. It's at the bottom of the hill that he sees Adela. Her field glasses are broken. Aziz goes back down to the lunch area, where Fielding is already there. Adela quickly drove back to Chandrapur. When the others get back on the train, Aziz is already in jail on charges of attacking Adela in a cave. The English get closer because they are loyal and don't like Indians. Fielding supports Aziz's case, which makes the English angry because he thinks Aziz is innocent. Mrs. Moore keeps hearing the sound in the cave, and it makes her angry and uninterested. Adela hears the echo too. Ronnie is mad at Mrs. Moore for how she acts, so he makes plans for her to go back to England early. Mrs. Moore passes away on the way. The hearing for Aziz is heated and disorganized. Adela says she was wrong, Aziz did not attack her in the cave, when she is questioned. When Aziz is freed, the Indians have a huge party, and Fielding takes Adela to college. Adela stays there for weeks, and Fielding grows to admire how brave she is. Adela goes back to England after Ronnie breaks off their engagement. Aziz thinks Fielding has wronged him, and his friendship with him grows cold. Aziz thinks Fielding will marry Adela in England when he sets sail for that country. After two years, Aziz now lives in Mao, which is a Hindu neighborhood. He feels more strongly about India being united and free from British rule. He thinks Fielding got married to Adela. Fielding brings his wife and brother-in-law to see Mao. When Aziz meets them, he is shocked to learn that Fielding married Mrs. Moore's daughter Stella Moore. At the same time, a big Hindu event is going on in town. Aziz falls in love with Ralph Moore, Stella's brother and Fielding's brother-in-law, and takes him out on the lake to see the fireworks. At the height of the events, Aziz's boat crashes into Fielding's. After the accident, Aziz and Fielding make up. The two men take one last ride together. Aziz tells Fielding that he and he can be friends once the English leave India. Even though they want to be friends, the sky and the earth seem to be standing between them and telling them, not yet. About the author. E. M. Forster was born in London to a middle-class family. He received a big sum of money from his great-aunt as a child and used it to support himself while concentrating on writing. 
Following his time at King's College, Cambridge, Forster became a part of the Bloomsbury Group, a small group of writers and thinkers that included Virginia Woolf and Lytton Strachey. After college, he traveled to Egypt, Germany, and India. During World War I, he refused to fight because of his beliefs. After going back to India in the early 1920s, he became Tukoji Rao III's private clerk and worked for the Maharaja of Duas. This is where most of a passage to India takes place. Many people know Forster from his books A Room with a View and Howard's End, but a passage to India made him famous. Forster was gay and only let close people know about it. He also never got married. He died at age 91. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.